was there for David Cohn's perfect game, July 18th, 1999. I was there when David Cohn threw the perfect game against Montreal. I was there for David Cohn's perfect game. I actually had a great seat right behind home plate. I was there on July 18th, 1999, the day I threw a perfect game. You know, it was an interesting day. It was Yogi Berra Day, and Don Larson and, and Yogi um, were involved in, in the first pitch. They kind of blessed the mound and blessed the home plate area. You know, the night before, I, you know, I was pretty excited because I knew it was going to be Yogi Berra Day. Finally, Yogi was coming back home after a long hiatus. Everybody started mentioning, oh, something might happen today because those two guys, they threw a perfect game in the World Series. I was really looking forward to pitching on Yogi Berra Day. I was, I was more concerned about Yogi than anything, you know, that I was planning to do during that game. but. It certainly was an uplifting experience to, to be able just to pitch on Yogi Berra Day. That was, a, you know, looking back, that was kind of a, a clue to all of us. I think the, you know, it was the most unique warm-up I've ever had before a game because I was completely distracted. I was watching Yogi on the field, the whole pre-game ceremonies of Yogi Berra Day and Yogi riding around in a convertible and the adulation he was getting from the fans and how happy that moment was. And I remember just warming up, not even thinking about how my, my arm felt. Rondell White sits one deep to the left center field. Long run for Williams, long run for Lede, and it will be Lede. Deep left center field, and the Expos are gone here in the top of the first inning. Once I got out of the first inning, uh, you know, I, I, was, I, I felt more and more comfortable as each inning went on. Uh, you know, in the first inning, Paulo Mignol made kind of a diving play on, uh, on a ball that could have got to the gap and maybe been a double or a triple. So I remember being relieved just to get out of the first inning, and then each inning, the second and the third, I started to strike some guys out. My slider started to break pretty quick and late, and they seemed to not be able to pick it up, and they were swinging at a lot of them that were breaking off the plate, and I, I thought I was kind of on to something after about the third inning. I remember David just being dominating, and he wasn't necessarily dominating before the rain delay, I believe, in the second inning, but after that, his stuff was incredible. You know, I think as a pitcher, you know when you give up your first hit or your first walk or base runners and you have to go into the stretch position on the mound. Uh, I knew that hadn't happened all day, and as each inning went on, I progressively knew what was going on. And it was a battle to kind of fight that feeling of, wow, oh, look, it's the fourth inning, no, nobody's got on base or the fifth inning. And of course you're thinking about it on the mound, but at the same time you're trying to kind of put that in perspective. It's too early to be thinking about anything like that. Keep your game going, keep executing, but at the same time, every step of the way, you, you, I knew exactly what was going on. Here's the 2-2, popped up, short right center field, coming in is Bernie Williams. He makes the call, and the catch is 15 in a row. And the pitch popped up, right side. Let's see if it stays in play. Girardi near the Yankee dugout, throws away the mask, makes the play for the final out of the sixth inning. 18 up, 18 down. You know, really the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings, uh, you know, you really started to get close and you get through the seventh inning and now you're six outs away. And after the sixth or seventh inning, I'm thinking, he's got no chance because he's running out of gas. But he, he kept firing it up there and he kept getting them out. When I think about that game, you know, it really came like, you know, this, this is possible. This can really happen. If we could just get by Vlad Guerrero one more time, this is a real possibility. I remember thinking during the last three innings, please don't let me be the one that screws this up. What must be going through his mind, through his chest, how his heart must be beating. He was rooting so hard for David Wells, but he knows his team is rooting for him right now. The 0-2. Strike three, breaking ball, cut him up. Strikeout number nine for David Cole. I remember getting through the eighth inning and walking off the mound, knowing that there's just one inning left, and the reaction of the crowd. As Mike would say, call your friends, your neighbors, even your enemies, and have them tune into Yankee baseball. End of seven and a half, five nothing Yanks, perfect game code. You know, you're on the edge of your seat, and you know, everything's superstitious. We're out in the bullpen. You kind of don't even talk to each other out in the bullpen, and you're, you're on the edge of your seat for every out. You know, I could feel my hair growing, the adrenaline rush that I got in that particular moment is something like I've never felt or I don't think I'll ever feel again. That's the kind of feeling that just absorbs your whole body. I mean, the fans were every bit as excited as I was. You know, I have recall of a, of a lot of sequences during that game, but in particular the ninth inning. I think starting off the ninth inning, Chris Widger was the catcher for the Expos and he let off and it was three straight sliders, two of them swinging, 
and it was a strikeout on three pitches. And to me, that set the tone for the ninth. And I knew from that point on, you know, that, that I was going to get it done. And the 0-2. Struck him out swinging. Slider away. Strikeout number 10 for David Cohn. It's really exciting being a pitching coach, watching someone who has worked so hard and to try to get to that, to that uh, you know, stage where he has an opportunity for it. You're still pins and needles because you know one pitch, one hanging slider, one pitch, a blooper can break it up at that point, having, especially you know, when you're that close, when, when you're one pitch away from a perfect game. When you get that far in a perfect game, you just you hate to see it. And there's so many guys that have got you know, eight, eight innings, eight and two thirds in, but that last out seems to become the most difficult. Well, as a pitcher, you know that until you can get that last pitch where you want to and get that last out, you just can't relax because it could end at any moment. So once it did, I was almost in disbelief. I was kind of in shock. It'll be a 1-1 pitch. He popped him up. He's going to get it. Rochus down from third. Rochus makes the catch. Ball game over. A perfect game. A perfect game for David Cohn. The third time works like a job. It is the third perfect game in Yankee Stadium history. Don Larson in 56, David Wells in 98, David Cohn in 99, 27 up, 27 down. David Cohn has attained baseball immortality. When it was popped up, you knew it was there, and I can still see him put his arms up, and I can still see Joe Girardi run out there and jump on him. The best thing I can remember about it is him and Joe Girardi hugging the, right in front of the mound after the game. I remember him uh, the, with that last out, you know, putting the glove over his head, getting down on his knees on the mound. Just kind of put my hands on my head and dropped to my knees and looked for Joe Girardi, and there he was. He was right there and came and gave me a big bear hug and tackled me on the ground. I just remember almost feeling like in disbelief, like shock that, that it actually happened. It's such a proud moment to be able to, after you throw a perfect game on a Yogi Berra day, to see him in the clubhouse after the game and give him a big hug, and Don Larson, I kind of ran up to him like he was my father, grabbed him and gave him a big hug. The look on his face, the look on my face, uh, that's probably my favorite photo uh, of the entire post-game uh, shots that, that I've seen. At that point in my career, I was 36 years old. It was towards the end of my career. It was probably the last chance I would ever find myself in a position to do something like this, to be able to make a mark in history or to do something historical. And, I knew immediately what it meant. And I was really excited for him because I know how long it had been. He was actually waited for that type of game. I, I knew that, you know, at that point in my career that this was a true gift and that it would never be forgotten and that Yankee fans would never forget it. And I also talk about Joe Girardi's day because he was the catcher. So it was really our, our perfect game. It was really a team perfect game. I felt so good for David because he had meant so much to our club over the years. He was the leader and he gave up the opportunity to throw a, a no hitter in 1996 when he came back from his aneurysm surgery. But I just felt really good that he had that opportunity. I could always look back on July 18, 1999 as a day that was my day. It's commemorated. I think everybody was appreciative of that and it's, it's a day that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be thankful for the rest of my life.